So hopefully you just did what you were tasked with doing, and you went off and you spent some time exploring these blue blocks in the motion menu, and you looked at ways in which you could move the cat around the screen. And you'll discover that there are a number of different ways that we can move our sprites, our actors, around on the stage. And while you might not have thought about these vocabulary words, it's, you probably discovered that there are two groupings of blocks. There are two different ways in which we can move sprites on the screen. And those deal with relative motion and absolute motion. Those of you who have experience with Microsoft Excel may be familiar with that vocabulary of relative versus absolute. We have the same thing in Excel where if you're working with a formula for a particular cell in Excel, um, you can reference other cells with relative access, meaning based on where it is from where I am now, or absolute access, meaning no matter where I am, always access this particular cell. And the same thing is true with Scratch. Um, so far, we've been working with, I mean, the first couple of blocks that we worked with were related to relative motion. What that means is, when I s click the green flag right now, I say move 50 steps, turn 45 degrees, move another 150 steps. And where I end up is all relative to where I started with, right? So when I started at the very middle of the stage pointing to the right, I did make it to the upper right-hand corner, more or less. But if I were to pick this cat up again and now rerun the program, he doesn't end up in the upper right-hand corner. If anything, maybe this is the upper left-hand corner. And that's because he still did the same action, but he did it relative to where he was to begin with, right? And so every time I run this, he ends up in sort of a different place based on where he is on the screen, right? And so that's all dealing with relative motion. Relative motion is something that your students will find relatively easy to work with, no, no pun intended there, um, because they, they can sort of think about moving forward and turning. But it does have the downside of really depending on the fact that the cat, your actor, has to be in the right location in order for things to begin. In this lesson, we haven't actually discussed the task from the previous lesson quite yet. Instead, we spent some time talking about the concept of relative motion, uh, some motion that you should have observed when you were trying to complete the previous task. In the next lesson, we're also not going to talk about the task quite yet, but we're going to talk about the alternative to relative motion called absolute motion.